some new details on that citation crash near Murrieta, California. And one Cessna 172 just can't wait to get into the maintenance hangar. This and more aviation news on Taking Off. Hi and welcome to Taking Off, I'm Dan Milliken. Our reports are made possible by our sponsors like Flying Eyes. Use our discount code of Taking Off, all caps, one word for 10% off. Link below and more info on our sponsors at the end. Today is the California episode. I don't know what's in the air over there, but all our stories originate in and from the Golden State. Before we get to the new details about the horrible Citation jet crash at French Valley Airport. First up, there was a small plane crash on July 4th at the same location. A Cessna 172 took off from the airport located near Murrieta, California, and went down shortly after east of the runway. Four people were on board and the plane ended up upside down in a parking lot. One adult was pronounced dead at the scene and the other three were rushed to the hospital, one with minor injuries, one moderate and one serious. The NTSB is investigating and that's all we know right now about that one. Then, four days later on Saturday, July 8th, 4.15 in the morning, local time at French Valley, a Cessna Citation 550 crashed on approach, killing all six people on board. Ceilings were being reported at 300 feet with visibility at about half a mile, which is below the minimum decision altitude for the approach into the airport. The flight had left Las Vegas at an hour earlier and was headed toward French Valley. The destination airport F70 was reporting VFR conditions at the time, and for non-pilots that means the conditions were visible, the clouds were high, and visibility was okay. During the flight, they went above 18,000 feet and into Class A airspace, which does require an IFR or instrument flight plan. On the descent, the jet canceled IFR because the destination was still reporting visual conditions, or VFR. And approach station 19 Kilo Romeo, I'd like to cancel IFR, or 3 to 7. Citation 819 Kilo Romeo, SoCal, 2984, understand canceling IFR. 2984, yes, we're canceling IFR, 819 Kilo Romeo. Thank you, Romeo Roger. Cancellation IFR is received. Uh, via proxy question, no weather or landing information for uh, French Valley. My discussion, I got the weather and landing at French Valley when I kill Romeo. But what happened is often does in California in the early morning, fog quickly rolled in. The pilots got the new weather and requested an IFR approach clearance, which ATC granted. And it's important to note that this airport, F70, is a non-towered airport. So ATC cleared the citation for the approach with instructions on calling to cancel their IFR flight plan once they got on the ground. Again, for non-pilots, an approach is a mapped out path through the sky for an airplane, usually used when weather or conditions make it difficult or impossible to see. It takes an additional rating, more training, all that stuff to be able to fly these approaches, and you rely on your instruments to get you down. These approaches will have minimum altitudes where you need to see the runway and minimum visibility in order to do the approach. The minimums will vary based on the equipment you have on your plane and the equipment the airport has. And we'll get more into the equipment and the minimums in just a minute. At 4.03 a.m., the pilot aborted the landing and performed a missed approach with a go-around. And what this tells us is that by the time they reached their decision altitude, they couldn't see the runway. So they went around to try it again. And again, the pilots contacted ATC, who acknowledged the missed approach and gave them instructions to try it again. By the FlightAware data, it appears that they flew the published mist. The airport only has one approach, the RNAV or GPS to runway 18. So they lined up to attempt it again. Once again, ATC cleared them for the approach and advised them to cancel their IFR flight when they reached the ground. The pilots responded with, talk to you in a minute, but that's the last communication anyone would receive from them. On the second approach is when the crash happened. The jet impacted the field about 500 feet short of the runway, and then fire consumed most of the airplane. One thing we don't know is what the visibility was reported before they hit the final approach fix. And this is important because if the visibility lowers after you reach the final approach fix, you can at least attempt it legally. But if the visibility was reported below the minimums before they reach the approach fix, you wouldn't want to even attempt that approach. 
we do know that they didn't have the proper visibility requirements on the first approach attempt because, well, they went missed. There's a lot of other questions like, why were they low on that second approach? Were they hand flying? Was the autopilot on? Was the approach that they had, was it programmed in? Was it programmed in correctly? We found a picture of the cockpit of this particular airplane, but we don't know if the avionics were upgraded or changed after this picture was taken. What you're seeing is a Garmin 750, which is capable of doing the lowest minimums on the approach plate, which would be an L, it's called an LPV approach. An LPV approach for this airport gets you as low as 250 feet above the ground and seven eighths of a mile in visibility. But we know from the weather at the airport, the METAR, reporting that conditions were still below these minimums. Visibility is especially crucial because that's your forward-looking minimum, which is important to see the runway out ahead. Flying the plane was 32-year-old commercial-rated pilot Reese Linders, assisted by Manuel Vargas Rigaldo, the manager and lead pilot of the flight company that was owned by Michael Morris, with several business jets. Besides the horrible tragedy of losing these six people, 11 children were orphaned by the death of these adults. And we at Taking Off send our thoughts and prayers to those affected by this horrible, tragic accident. And that's all we really know right now, and the NTSB should be releasing the prelim report in about another week. But it's a very sobering reminder to me to not fall below my own personal minimums. I know I've been tempted to shoot an approach at night that was below the minimums. Part of me reasons, well, the avionics today are just amazing, and the autopilot can do most of the work anyway. Or even better, this thought, let me just cowboy this landing and how satisfying it'll be to land this sucker in these conditions. Look, I'm not immune to those thoughts, and that's why I have to constantly remind myself superior judgment trumps superior skill. In other California news, on July 10th at Long Beach Airport, just after 2 p.m. local, a Cessna 172 came to rest nose down on top of the West Coast maintenance hangar. The pilot had minor injuries but was okay. Few details are out, so we're glad the pilot was okay. Flight data shows that this was the fifth flight of the day for this airplane, for the day previous, sounds like a Flight School 172. Registration shows Jeffrey and Weiss holdings out of Long Beach. And man, with this picture, the social media comments have started. You guys, please be nice now. Okay, Air Venture is right around the corner, July 24th through July 30th at Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We're having an epic gathering, over 30 YouTubers on Monday the 24th at Forum Stage 9, 2.30 p.m. Come and meet up with your favorite YouTubers. We have channels like Mike Patey, Jimmy's World, Aviation 101, Josh and Chelsea, Baron Pilot and Kim, and, and so many others. We look forward to seeing you there. Well, that's it for the Aviation News. Thanks for watching and thanks to our sponsors. Check out 67 Designs. They make incredible mounts for phones, tablets, and cameras. They're made in the US. Also, Z-Vision, the brightest landing and taxi lights available. Marshall, protective services, private security elevated. And ClemensInsurance.net. When I switched over to Jerry, he found ways to save me four figures on my insurance for my Cessna. And Colton Mortgage, ColtonTakingOff.com. All our sponsors are run by pilots, so let's keep it in the aviation community. Remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills. We'll see you next time.